Okay, here we go. Placing my hand on my heart. Taking that deep cleansing breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this opportunity to come together to be the two or more who are gathered in the name and the nature of love, in the name and the nature of peace. We are grateful and thankful for our willingness to be the peace, the joy, the beauty, the love in this world to shine our light brightly. We are grateful for our dedication and devotion to shining away any and all blocks to love, allowing them to dissolve and resolve back to the nothingness from which they came. We're grateful for the teachings of A Course in Miracles. We're grateful for our mighty companions, our earthly and heavenly helpers. We ask that they join us now, walking with us and talking with us and blessing us during our conversation today allowing our time together to be a healing, loving, peaceful time. We're grateful to be open and receptive to receive the kingdom of heaven, the all good of God. And we're grateful to share those blessings and the love that we are with mother earth and all humanity because we are one. In grace and gratitude, we let it be, and so it is. Amen. Hmm. So we are uh, still in the in the psychotherapy purpose process and practice. Uh, the extension of A Course in Miracles. And we are in chapter two, the process of psychotherapy, section five, the process of healing. And I'm going to start us off with the first two paragraphs. I highlighted almost every single one of them <laughs> this week. Um, while truth is simple, it must still be taught to those who have already lost their way in endless mazes of complexity. This is the great illusion. In its wake comes the inevitable belief that to be safe, one must control the unknown. This strange belief relies on certain steps which never reach to consciousness. First, it is ushered in by the belief that there are forces to be overcome to be alive at all. And next, it seems as if these forces can be held at bay only by an inflated sense of self that holds in darkness what is truly felt and seeks to raise illusions to the light. Let us remember that the ones who come to us for help are bitterly afraid. What they believe will help can only harm what they believe will harm alone can help. Progress becomes impossible until the patient is persuaded to reverse his twisted way of looking at the world, his twisted way of looking at himself. The truth is simple, yet it must be taught to those who think it will endanger them. It must be taught to those who will attack because they feel endangered and to those who need the lesson of defenselessness above all else to show them what is strength. And I, when I was reading this, it was um, bringing to mind the sense of fear that I was feeling um, not so much last week, but the week before. Um, and the fear, what I thought the fear was around was um, my husband's slowing down and not appearing to engage in life at all. And 
the fear is really around um what will life be without him um because if i listen to like medical experts um and i'm not saying that medical ex experts should not be listened to but if i listen to medical experts what they are telling me is that the kidney transplant that he had in 2018 has a five to 10 year life. Um, and that the anti-rejection medications that he takes are carcinogenic. And so I can believe that and scare the crap out of myself, or I can realize that, okay, I'm having these fear thoughts um, just because I'm having fear does not mean that I am wrong or bad. Um, that the fear of the future comes from my past, from the trauma I experienced as a child when I believed that I had to be in control to remain safe. And when I acknowledge and thank that little girl, um, for for keeping me safe at a time when that's what I thought I needed to do to keep safe, uh, to try and uh, manipulate people so that certain people were not enraged and there wasn't screaming and violence in the house, then I can love her and let her know that I am safe. I am more mature. We are supported by the universe. And um, we have no need for a five-year plan, despite what we were taught. Um, and that I am allowing Holy Spirit to drive this bus. So she does not need to drive the bus. <laughs> this bus that is my life is being driven by Holy Spirit and that she is safe and she can just sit back and relax. And so that's uh, where I'm starting us off today. So anybody else have anything they would like to share on um, what they got in the reading? Or something that happened during the week? I can share. Thank you. Um, that last piece of what you just read um, about to those who need the lesson of defenselessness above all else that really struck me um, in seeing how much this past week I've really been seeing there's been a lot of um, feeling like I've been deprived, <laughs> a lot of deprivation, but really underneath that was really control. Um, and speaking to what you were just saying of like, as a child, I needed to have all of this control. And I put so much limits on what I allow myself to have because that's how I kept myself safe was like, I never allowed myself too much. And just seeing how much I'm always in the constant defending myself and not just allowing myself to be who I truly am. Um, and when I read that, it just, I could feel the energy of it, of like how heavy it is and how much there is there and like it's like oh well no wonder like I'm not like just seeing how it's all coming together like of course that's all this heaviness in my body that I'm with all these seeing that wow I really don't need to defend myself as much as, like and so I guess it was just kind of something that just really popped out for me was just seeing how much my whole life um, I defend every part of me <laughs> <laughs> and how exhausting it is and how that's really not my truth. Um, yet that's just the pattern I created in order to also be in this illusion of what is safety. Like I created all of these things that I think are keeping me safe when in reality, they're really not yet. It's what I created as a child. So it, yeah, it was really kind of spoke to me. So just thought I'd share that. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. Yeah. And you can just love that part of yourself for how she was keeping you safe because 
she was coming from an immature mindset at the time. You know, she, you know, she was just doing whatever instinct came to her that she, at, at least from what I experienced, like I had this sense in my mind that if I could make the perfect martini for my father when he walked in the door we were going to have a good night like dinner would go well and we would be peaceful until we went to bed and uh the same thing with my mom with the depression that she um experienced when I was a child that I had it in my mind that I could manipulate her to be happy so that you know so that life was good for all of us um and, and yes it was manipulation but at the same time like I said it was coming from an immature mind a child who didn't know any better and was just doing what she needed to do in order to feel safe and feel like uh, my little sister was safe as well. So yeah, just yeah. loving the heck out of those little girls. Yeah. And it's interesting because like, I never thought that I was someone who manipulated because it was coming from this, well, I'm keeping everybody safe. Like this right? is a good thing <laughs> yet. Really. I was been just manipulating people. So it's just interesting of seeing like, Oh, I don't do that. Like I'm not a manipulator yet it was my safety protection and that's how I did it. So yeah. yeah. Yes. Loving these parts of me, definitely giving yeah. lots of love and compassion. Absolutely. I mean, that's when it's, it says in there, uh, it seems as if these forces can be held at bay only by an inflated sense of self that holds in darkness. What is truly felt it holds it in darkness. As long as we're hiding it, how we feel we're giving it all the power that it has yeah and there's so much shame around it so like for me to first admit like that I manipulate people like it was just like oh no like I can't admit that because then all the shame would come up right and so you'd want to kind of hide that away but then now it's just like oh this is just stuff we all do and like once you can get to that place it feels it's more freeing and it's, you can see, be more in the truth. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Leslie. Anybody else like to share? Um, Linda. Yeah, go ahead, Robin. Thank you, Diane. You yeah, thank you so much. Um, what came out of just your here listening to you all the words about power and how much I have given my power away for you know whatever, and um, I really wasn't feeling sad, but I could just have a crying session in in sharing that and. And I will, I'm lucky because what has brought me, what helps me um, hearing that goes with what I'm practicing. And it's nothing new, but it feels new to me because I finally went, oh, I understand. And so it, when I'm letting go of my power, I'm usually not in a very good place in my thinking. And it doesn't mean that I'm crying or mad or to the hilt of some kind of emotion. It sort of just is an underlying mild, I don't even know I'm doing it until I do. And I'm so grateful that I can come to that more quickly, like, wait a minute, <laughs> we're not doing that anymore, remember? And the latest little tool, you'll all be like, well, it doesn't matter. It's my insight. <laughs> so, um, and I don't mean to say that in a negative way, but I know I get excited and I want everybody to be excited with me. And then when they're not, I'm like, what happened? Um, 
this idea of, um, and you'll have to, I have to slow down. I forget things so easily. One of the tools that I am able to use now because of I have an awareness is that with all the thinking that seems to be negative, etc., I have come to the recognition that we all know, but somehow I got it in a deeper level, is that the minute I am, any moment that I am in negativity, I'm separate from God. Now that's pretty like, well, yes, of course, but it's, it has brought a simplicity. I can go, oh, Robin, you're just separating. And it's not like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, separating. But somehow for me, it is a um, tool, a, a tool that's new, kind of refreshing, just the way it's um, come to me. And not especially in, in some way, new form, but just it simplifies it. And all of these thoughts of negativity, I can remember, oh, you're separate now. You're separate from spirit. You're separate from your, you know, brother. You're just separate. And I can feel that separateness. And it takes a lot of, it's, I'm, sometimes it's more easily comes and I can go forth. And sometimes it's more challenging. Uh, but anyway, it's helpful to me. And thank you for letting me share. Yeah, thank you, Robin. I, I feel like, you know, like it says, the truth is simple. We know what the truth is. The truth is, is any time that we are feeling discomfort, we are feeling separated. And yet, we, at least for myself, and it sounds like what you were just sharing, we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the understanding of that and get more in tune with how to practice it, how to practice, okay, I'm feeling separate right now. It's okay that we got to this place, but if you would like to be happy, what can we do to make that happen? You know, whether it's to reach out for prayer, to call a friend, uh, to reach out to somebody in need and help them, um, to listen to music, to dance, to go for a walk, whatever it takes. So it's it's simple and we, I feel we just get it at deeper and deeper levels the more we practice. Well, that is so beautiful, Linda. And as you shared what we can do uh, it's just ordinary things. It's getting up and getting some water. And it's not about getting up and getting water. It's about changing the vibration or our energy. Yes. Help us go more deeply in understanding. Exactly. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Carla. I've been working on that lately because I sense whenever I have a sense of fear or discomfort, I just make myself sit down and I just start repeating, God is all power and nothing can oppose God's power. And that gives me a sense of peace. Sometimes I have to stay there for a little while, but, you know, I just don't want to go to those places because once that start down that trail, it just seems like it grows. Yeah. Yeah. Because what we focus on just uh, amplifies, right? Yeah, definitely. Think, yeah. Beautiful. And then another one I use is, I don't know which lesson it's from, is the peace of God is in me. Mm. And yeah. that one's helpful too. Yeah, I've been using that a lot the last week or so since the uh, conflict in Israel started. Um, just really focusing on peace. I've been playing... <laughs> Uh, Deva uh, Pramal's um, Om Shanti Shanti Om chant, peace, 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 on repeat 
like throughout the day whenever I think about it, just because I know that 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 piece starts with me. That piece starts with me. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. I'm hoping someday this sense of separation goes away, and every day I pray to Holy Spirit to heal that belief in separation. But honestly, I'm not seeing a much difference. I still have a lot of fear and things coming up. Oh yeah, and I mean that's what I was just talking about. I had that you know just a couple of weeks ago, and even into early last week, I was I was stuck in that space of fear, fear of what is happening, what I perceive is happening, whether it's the truth or not, and fear of the unknown, fear of the future. But what I what I know for sure is that. I have survived so many things in my lifetime. And even if I don't survive, I'm okay with that. I am happy with my life exactly as it is. And yeah, I'd like to stick around and see what happens with my newly married son and his wife, but I'm at peace. And I am, you know, if I went and got hit by a bus today, I would be good i'm good to go well yeah. and as we've talked about before sometimes you just have to take it moment to moment you can't take on too much into the future exactly exactly yeah and br bringing it up bringing it to the light is the way to take your power back from it is what i have found i just you know when when i'm feeling that darkness reaching out for prayer, reaching out to a prayer partner and saying, I'm having a rough time right now. Can you just say a prayer? It's just, it's so helpful. And like Carla always says, when you're washing the car, the first thing that gets clean is the inside of the hose. So the person that's praying for me is benefiting from, from the prayer as much, if not more than I am. So yeah. Definitely a full-time job. I know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. Carla, thank you for your patience. That seems to be the theme, you know. I used to want to focus on staying calm, staying peaceful. And that's helpful, but what I'm realizing is actually the moments where I'm least peaceful is where I learn the most. Because there are the experiences that are perfectly designed for our awakening. Um, I was led to a paragraph six, line nine. It may seem, may even seem to be a worsening and not a help. Yet the outcome could not be judged. The outcome would not be judged by us. So I've been having really experiencing uh, some dramatic, uh, I'm trying to describe it, but moments of loss of peace. And I kind of blamed ego for that all my life. Yet, ego is what our tool for is being in this physical dimension. It's not bad or wrong, even though, even what it, it chooses, I allow it. I believe it. I listen to it. Who's responsible? I'm giving ego, making ego responsible and not taking responsibility. So just say one experience that 
has been unsettling me is that my mother, I don't know if I spoke about this, but about two months ago, my mother was found on the floor in the kitchen of her house. And, um, and the good thing is my brother is like so good at taking care of everything. He's taking care of everything. And it's actually given me an opportunity to just let him. And that's the, we, I need to do nothing And I want to do something. And the other line is, you know, is, is I think six, paragraph six, line five. And that's it. For he, God, I think, has never asked for more than the smallest willingness. And I'll stop there. I've spoken about willingness and allowing, and, and it's not just allowing what I experience and the fear, but to allow everybody in this world that I'm one with to choose whatever they choose, whether it's unloving or loving, peaceful or not peaceful, or it's to allow the end and stay peaceful. So I was going to talk more about my mother, but I, I've been led to this. So for some reason, my social security went down significantly this month because they think that I'm, because it's been 48 months on disability that I get Medicare and now they're, they're taking the money for Medicare. And I'm not in a place where I can do anything about it. I, I'm not, I don't have my card, I don't have, I don't know, I, I called them and Somehow, <clears throat> this experience is helpful. <clears throat> and I remember once <clears throat> I tried calling him, I was on the line for like four or five minutes and talked to him and found out I couldn't do anything really. Except, what can I do? I can stay peaceful. And I can trust that somehow it's all been perfectly designed for my awakening. I, I've never read this, the psychotherapy handbook before. <clears throat> Never. And it's kind of amazing that a poem that came out of me was, life is simple. That's one of the, one of the perfect, exact lines of this. So I know the truth somehow. We all know, yet we're so focused on what we see, what we feel, the illusion the story of our lives, what happened or little, what's happened, what we feel, that we forget that only love is real. And if I think, if I worry about something or I'm worried about my mother or can I stop her passing? I can't, I can't really, I can't really, the, the her higher self choose that. Does the body choose that? Does the physical mother? No, 
it's she doesn't it's sort of been it's not that's been chosen but the possibility there's an endless amount the script is written as the endless amount of possibilities would it be next month or whenever <clears throat> but I'm given countless opportunities. I'm so freaking blessed. And it doesn't always feel like it. And it's when I'm the most blessed that it does not feel at all like I'm blessed at all. I can't mess it up. I cannot fail. I can extend it out longer in this illusion of time during this lifetime or at some time I've had and nobody else can can cause my failure. It's impossible. So I'm gonna simply do this. Be still. Let go of thinking that I must do something. I need to do nothing. The future has already been decided in a way. Not this physical life of Carla self. More. Way more. We're way more than a body, than what we see in the mirror, what we feel in the body, and what thoughts that come to us in the mind. So it also says that ask for help and it shall be given, but we don't always see it. So I'm, I'm asking for help. Not that it needs to look like what I think. It's already been given. And I'm grateful. So very grateful that I cannot fail. You cannot. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Carla. Was there a poem? Oh, did you want one? Well, I thought you I, said you had written one. Uh, I've the simply, simply, I read it like twice here, but I'll, I'll do the, I'll read. This is a hard one to read because it looks like I have not approached it, the, the continuing peaceful place yet. But I'll read this. It's called What? What do I truly desire out of life, out of this life? I ask myself, I can ask for things in the illusion and I will receive them. But what do I truly desire? I clear my mind of Thoughts, and I know happiness. And I can only truly be happy with one thing. When I choose only one thing, love. It is not about giving love or receiving love, although that is part of it. It is about being Love, seeing love everywhere, feeling love 
at all times, no matter what we experience, receiving the love of God, which is always coming to us and extending that love, only love out into the world, the physical world, through sharing, sharing love, all that I am until everyone remembers that is all they are. Thank you, Carla. Beautiful, thank you. Who else would like to share? Go ahead, Nancy, go. I have so much to say, but I can't put it all together concisely. So what I did last night, I wanted to thank you also for the, for the that was so amazing, seriously. I think I started writing and I never stopped writing. And you would get the question and I keep writing. I said, well, that's the next thing. That's what I think. Yes, yes. And then you ask the question, what did you learn about yourself from writing this letter? It's like, that was like, you know, we used to, I can't, I don't know how to substitute words, but it's more like a slow burn until you, it lights. Um, and so after it's like I was that was in my mind the whole time, and then I st I went to eat supper, and all of a sudden I said, "Oh, that's it." <laughs> and you know, I can't remember right exactly right now, but it was like, and then I said it was like this realization of the truth, and I just started weeping and weeping and weeping, and it's like. And then I was okay, and it was like, ooh. And then it was talking about the, uh, in here, my it said they fell. I finally fell out. <laughs> the song of prayer, and it's like, all right, I just ripped it out. Okay, it's like this is sort of like the pamphlet I used to have, you know. But anyways, um, okay, this is what I was. I'm just so I'm excited. And that's not. Ex I am so. It's joy. It's peace, it's love, it's truth. The truth, knowing the truth. And so it's like, and I, it's like, I've just been experiencing it. And one of these days when it settles in, then I'll be able to share it. But what I did with, you know, I went to read this and then I said, you know what, since it was a, uh, had fallen out it's like I said oh okay let's see well I say so I went back to the, the um introduction the little this little piece of introduction and it says can I read it okay it says psychotherapy is the only form of therapy there is since only the mind can be sick only the mind can be healed only the mind is in need of healing. This does not appear to be the case, where the manifestations of this world seem real indeed. Psychotherapy is necessary so that an individual can begin to question their reality, this reality, the world's reality. Sometimes he is able to start to open his mind without formal help. But even then, it is always some change in his perception of interpersonal relationships that enables him to do so. Sometimes he needs a more structured, extended relationship with an, quote, official therapist. Either way, the task is the same. The patient must be helped to change his mind about the reality of illusions. 
And then what I did was I go to the first sentence in each section, the purpose of psychotherapy. Very simply, the purpose of, psych of therapy is to remove the blocks to truth. Its aim is to aid the patient in abandoning his fixed delusional system, the ego system, and to begin to reconsider this, the cause and effect relationships on which it rests. No one in this world escapes fear, but everyone can re reconsider its causes and learn to evaluate them correctly. God has given everyone a teacher whose wisdom and help far exceed whatever contributions an earthly therapist can provide. Yet there are times and situations in which an earthly patient therapist relationship becomes the means through which he, spirit, offers his greater gifts to both. Um, anyway, so then the next section is the process of therapy, the introduction. Therapy, psychotherapy is a process that changes the view of the self. Um, at best, this new self is a more bene beneficent self-concept. A therapy can hardly be expected to establish reality. That is not its function. If it can make way for reality, it has achieved its ultimate success. Its whole function in the end is to help the patient, patient deal with one fundamental error, the belief that anger brings him something he really wants and that by justi justifying attack, he is protecting himself. To whatever extent he comes to realize that this is an error, to that extent is he truly saved. Anyway, and then over and over, the next one was, the place of religion, it says, to be a teacher of God, it is not necessary to be religious or even to believe in God to any recognizable extent. It is necessary, however, to teach forgiveness rather than condemnation, um, et cetera, et cetera. And the, it's like for every the beginning sentence in every one. Um, Etc. The process of its illness and as well. It's all about this. It's so simple, like Carla was saying. It's in here. It keeps saying over and over. Truth. It's simple. The truth is simple. It's so simple. It's all about just forgiveness. Just. And then it talks about and then the process of healing. While truth is simple, it must still be taught to those who have already lost their way in endless mazes of complexity. Well, where do you think I've been all these years? <laughs> Figuring it out, blah, 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 blah. my mind is so great. Look at that, that's, oh God. This is the great illusion. In its way comes the inevitable belief that to be safe, one must control the unknown. I, you already, this strange belief relies on certain, Steps. Okay, you, you already read that. And et cetera, et cetera. Healing is holy down here at four, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then I proceeded to read, I read each section that I, up to what, where we are. Um, then the, at six, it's the first sentence. The process of therapy then can be defined simply as forgiveness. For no healing can be anything else. And it's like, and the amazing aha was um, when I got to the question in the, in the, re the letter, the South Presence letter, um, which says, what am I doing now to support myself? What I'm doing now to support myself is attending every forgiveness letter writing class <laughs> because it gives me the structure I need, the safe place I need to feel safe, and have permission to express these thoughts without being judged, shut down, criticized, or, you know. And then, um, and then the thing was that later the, the slow burn is like, and for that is like, um, all I can remember is, um, 
that I was the one, it's like, it, it's like you're um, on the edge or it's like, if the, um, I was in the, in, inside, like in, in the apartment in, inside. Look, I could see out the front. I could see out towards the back, but over the fence. I could see, I could see into the back, Shirley and Margie's stairs they were the same level I was in their house at the back porch um they were my babysitters um and I could hear what was going on outside I could hear the world outside I was inside and that's basically the what it's like how my mother every time I tried to connect with I was low I knew what and I knew that that was like a fence around me and I could not reach out and touch, touch anyone. I couldn't be with anyone. I couldn't share their lives. I couldn't be a part of their, that world. Unless she set me out to do something, go here and be this part at this party or do this or this. But, and it was, in a, but I, it's just like the realization of what it was saying that we're all searching to so I mean I was separate I was actually physically and then mentally separate you know um from love and that's what this whole course is about and then when it talks about it, it's all an illusion it's just like I'm, I've come to that. It's like, I'm in this, it's still in this at the moment. I'm trying to, I'm just basking in it and letting it come as, as it comes, whichever thing, something I'll see on TV. I have the TV on because there's, there's people, I mean, I can't interact with them, but it's like there's people here because otherwise I'm all alone here. There's no interaction. And I figured out that's probably what the problem is with this, but the brain fog or whatever is this thing I'm not practicing talking to anybody and having to use language until it's like because the other day it was like I said oh I went to the dentist because I think I'm not sure still I haven't decided if it's a tooth or the sinuses but and then I realized um, the only time that why I get sick it's the only time I ever got any attention from my mom which was could be like throw me a, a bunch of tissues or you know that, but that was it. But it was something, and then I got to go see somebody else that has an intelligence. I always connect with it, um, and I finally realized that. I said, "Oh, that's what what sickness means to me. I get to connect with a very intelligent, loving, caring person that's caring for me, doesn't expect anything from me." <laughs> and I said, "Oh, that's what it, that's what illness is for me," and it's like. And I don't need, I don't, um, you know, these are realizations. This is like massive. So um, someday I put it all together and, and it's all, and then it's like, okay, knowing that and that this is me and this is my experience and, but, and everybody else is have their own same type deal, but their own form. How can I not forgive? Forgiveness means um, just, releasing me from this illusionary prison I'm in. That's none of these words are what I thought of. I can they can't I can't get them out, you know, coherently. So yeah. and, and put it all together, mother, everybody. Yeah. What? And releasing your mother as well. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because exactly. It's it's like, oh, and then going back through all of my life, I went back and I said all the different people, oh, there was love and there was love and that person, that yeah. person, that person. And somebody, was it you? Somebody kept saying, it's like, it's easy to love me. I was like, what? How can it be easy to love me? But then I go back and I see all those people, all those people did, but then she wouldn't let me connect with them. So they were all there. That love was all well, all there. And now then I start crying because I say, oh, it was there. But yeah. I just couldn't, I wasn't allowed to, 
But then, and it's like, that's okay. And it says, don't hide the feelings. So right. then let the feelings out and then I won't, you know. I think I'm done, but I wanted to thank you so much, Linda. You're that so was just like I, the key. Yeah. What I did I learn you. about myself? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, thank you for asking it. Yeah, you're so welcome. I love facilitating those uh, forgiveness letter, self-forgiveness letter writing workshops. Um, I, I go for the same reason you do because I'm keeping myself accountable. It's giving me the structure to sit in my seat and write the dang letter. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, because I've, I've left to my own devices, I won't. Right. So yeah. it, it's perfect. It's like, it's like uh, Jennifer's going to hear it too. So like uh, for whatever, however, you know, however, and you know what? I started in this community about a year before you did. That's how long it's taken me to get to this point. But then it says um, healing is a process. Mm -hmm. Remember when I started, I said, I said, I'm an event person. I don't know how to do process. you got to be kidding me. How much is this 12 years later? <laughs> yeah, you're there. You're getting it. We all are. Oh, I, I, I went to, you know, John Mundy was the speaker for the thing last week. And it's like, I remember at the, after I said, well, now I'm 81, right? And I've got, got I've gone through the cancers. They're all healed. They're blah, blah, blah. I said, now, what do I do with the rest of my life? And he says, what's the purpose of my, he says, just, just be loving. Just yeah. love everybody. That's it. That's all you have to do. <sighs> That's easy, right? I guess. <laughs> if I'm so easy to love, I guess. <laughs> oh, one more thing, this part to this, that, um, my therapist that I had, he was a pastor, pastor person. He was my pastor and everything. Um, and I asked him one day, um, he had psychology training and everything. Um, I said, do you know what, can you tell me what's wrong with me? Or you know, what do you think or what would you be? He says, the, the only the thing, well, I was, he has ADHD too. It's like, we're like, oh, it's, anyway. But he said, it's, it looks to me, he says, I believe that you have been, Almost completely tactile, deprived, I mean, touching. And I said, well, yeah, that started when I was two and a half. My father, I dumped my brother out right now. My father picked me up and my mother yells, don't touch her. Don't even pick her up. Don't, e don't pick her up. Don't even touch her. Right. I was two and a half. And then when my daughter was born, um, it's like, how do I take care of this little squirmy little thing? So I took, I, I don't remember what her skin feels like or anything. I took care of her, but I somehow blocked out the the, the sensation. It's like, I don't have those memories now, do, but anyway, okay, I'm done. But anyway, so thank you for listening, everybody. I appreciate it. You're and welcome. I'm glad for all the years and all the times that I talked and that, that we got to hear you get the good, the good stuff. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else like to share before we, um, oops, sorry, <laughs> before we uh, wrap this up this week, I've got about five minutes left. Leslie, I know you went off camera. I was just wondering if you, how you're doing this week. Because I know last week was challenging, but I don't know if you can share now because you're off camera. So maybe not. I did want to ask. Wait, she may not be able to. Okay, so I'm going to... Well, well, Linda, can I say, if, just reading through this, if you read it like, uh, um, not word for word, because there's so much, the language is like hard to get through a sentence, but if you read it through is, uh, it's like you're reading a novel or an article or something, and it just says, while truth is simple, it still must be taught, blah, blah, blah. but each thing, and it says, um, it's like talking about, takes two people, the therapist, a therapist person, and a patient person, another person, 
Um, but it says the only requirement is that for the healing to take place is for them both to have the same goal. Very Doesn't and it's yeah, and it's like or at some point you know they they end up with the same goal, yeah. and then when it says two the two or more this is where then it's it says uh, Christ the Spirit is there. There's no doubt he has to be there if pe two people are going for the same goal they have the same goal. Um from you know they can come from be coming from two different places and blah, blah, blah. if they have the same goal then god is there and that that's a guarantee that god is there. and like carla read the only thing that's required is that tiny little whisper of willingness that thought that just that's all is required that's all that's required yeah, and it just this is like it's so it seems so, like so complicated to read, but it's like to it says over in what is it six for two have joined, and now God's promises are kept by Him. Yeah, and it's like whatever what they must start, their Father God will complete, for He's never asked more than the just the smallest willingness. The least advanced, the tiniest of whispers of his name. For to ask for help, whatever form it takes, is only to call on him. Yeah. And he will send his answer. It's just so beautiful. I mean, out of that complexity, that's how I try to read to, to just pull it. I'm done. Go ahead, Linda, take off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, so next week, um, we are in section six, the definition of healing. So I look forward to chatting with y'all about that. And I'm going to read, um, Robin, go ahead. Honey. Then, yeah. Um, I'm so sorry for leaving you guys. I need to learn how to do the chat. It's so crazy, <laughs> but thank you for being with me today and, uh, I will see you next week. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, so I'm going to read the uh, insights insights from our friends at Pathways of Light for lesson number 290, which is my lesson today. My present happiness is all I see, and may it be so. In the present moment, happiness is all there is to see. If I'm experiencing anything that is not supreme happiness, it is because I have placed an illusion in the way of my seeing the truth. God's will for me is that I be happy, that I share his happiness. Anything less than perfect happiness is not worthy of God's son and therefore not worthy of me. If I experience any discomfort, pain, upset, sadness, fear, guilt, resentment, or lack, and don't do something about it, then I am settling for what, what is not worthy for me of me. I am accepting less than the perfect peace and supreme happiness God wills for me. I am grateful for the course which gives me the means to not settle for less than God's will for me. It is very simple. I need only give every thought of lack and loss, pain and suffering to the Holy Spirit and open my mind to his translation of the mistaken thought into the vision of perfect love. He will undo the effects of all my mistaken ideas by deciding for God for me, if I but let him. His, this turning over of my thoughts requires steady vigilance and practice. I have been accustomed to letting my mind run wild in the fields of the ego thought system. Peace cannot be found in those fields. I must train my mind not to seek there for happiness but rather to turn to the Holy Spirit in my mind. As I make each recognition of a less than peaceful thought, a reminder to turn to Holy Spirit, guilt fades away. Instead of using lack of peace as an excuse to punish myself, I use it instead as a reminder to listen to God's voice in my mind. His voice speaks of my innocence and the innocence of all my brothers. 
It speaks of our holiness and wholeness. It speaks of the love we are and share. Today I would listen to his voice and I will see only my present happiness. The sentence that stands out to me in this lesson is, yet I would not allow my mind to be deceived by the belief of the dream I made is real an instant longer. I am learning how important it is to recognize when I am allowing my mind to be deceived. I recognize clearly that the dreams I dream at night are not real, but now it is time to recognize that what I experience during the day is also a dream. The dream I am making during the day is also not real. It too is a dream and I need not be deceived. I can learn to recognize the daydream as a dream with the help of Holy Spirit. I always have the help of Holy Spirit to show me the difference between what is real and what is not real. The dream I am dreaming during the day is also a projection that is made up by me. I understand that this need for projection comes from guilt that has been made unconscious. I now have the opportunity to see this guilt as it shows up in the dream and with the help of Holy Spirit, let it go. In truth, nothing has really happened to change my reality as an extension of love. But at some level, I am thinking that something has happened to change that truth. The fact is nothing has changed. I have just dreamed a dream and its content is not true. I am still universal love and everyone is still universal love. That is my lesson today and every day. Yet I would not allow my mind to be deceived by the belief the dream I made is real an instant longer. What I have seen in every dream I dream is not there. As I truly get this with the help of Holy Spirit, I will stop choosing to project guilt in dreams. As this happens, my present happiness will be all I see. Because dreams look so real, I need the Holy Spirit to help me see their unreality. I need the Holy Spirit to show me everyone's oneness in spirit behind the dream of separation. I need the Holy Spirit to show me the innocence behind the dream of projected guilt. The time is now to hand every dream over to the Holy Spirit to be seen for what is what it truly is. Sometimes as I am reading a lesson, I feel a momentary sense of panic as I think, how can I ever do this? Then I remember that I only need to be willing. I only need to want this and allow Holy Spirit to heal my thinking. Then I relax into certainty again, because I know I can do that. Thank goodness. Thank you, everybody. Have a peaceful and joyful week. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.